Welcome everyone and today I'll be showing you how I made this lovely menu and it takes your order works out how much you should be paying and then you, you know it ends just like that now you if you want you can in, uh, in, uh, improve on it and add whatever you want to add into it but that's our menu here okay so it displays the menu and then allows you to make an order i'm gonna show you how that works now if i click on play it shows you our menu here okay one is chicken rice and all the prices okay and some drinks so now i can say let me order um, number one chicken i need one serving anything else yes presenter and then i say let me have a uh, some rice number two and i need one serving for that anything else yes i need a drink as well and let me say i need some mineral water okay uh, i need one for that uh, anything else no and that's um the total for my meal okay five pound and three and water that's um, a total of nine pounds that's what i should be paying and it says thanks and for your order and enjoy your meal now suppose i made a mistake okay and i typed let's say chicken is one let's say i typed letter l instead of one and then uh, how many portions i typed letter o instead of zero by the way, even if you did zero, it will still make a miss. It's still, still gonna say you made a mistake. Press enter, incorrect input. Okay, if I said uh, menu, I wanted to order for the pie, how many portions, and I wrote uh, W or oh, I wrote 10 in numbers. Okay, incorrect input. All right, four, and this time I wrote three portions. Press no. That's it, that's my order, okay? So it can catch some errors as well. All right, now I'm gonna show you how I made this. Okay, I need to hide this. Now remember, when it says incorrect input, it allows you about two seconds to read the word and then clears the screen before, and the way it calls the function again, same function over here called choice. In order for our program, to use to clear the screen and also use the timer we need to import these two uh, modules okay so uh, this enables okay and run the timer we're going to initialize these variables that is what it, it is um where setters is equal to y price is zero uh this function displays the menu okay and then it's going to calculate the price okay then here the screen clears when let's say you made a mistake because otherwise it's going to show it's going to show everything that's happening from the start that's been happening from the start so in order to avoid that you need to clear the screen make it clean so that you know they don't get confused menu of the dictionary okay the food is stored in a dictionary named menu okay that's where we're gonna store the food, store it like this. Okay, any other way is gonna bring so many problems. Now, there's so many other ways of actually accessing data from a dictionary, but I chose this way because it's probably the hard way anyway. Where position one, where this one, ID one, is equal to this, and it will all make sense later on. Now, after declaring the menu, we're gonna uh, display the title, today's menu, okay? display that title there now in order to decorate our python you see these lines you see here those lines there to your right it displays a sign 34 times on a new line okay so you know it says today's menu and then under uh, underlines it just to separate the, um, the topic uh, to separate this title from the menu that's going to be displayed now we need a loop that's going to read through the menu okay from the start position to the end of that menu okay to the end now it's gonna say as long as x 
is within now remember um we did plus one because otherwise it's gonna leave out the last position here length of a menu is only gonna read the length but it starts at zero when it's counting so we add plus one here from one because it specifically said from one it doesn't matter because you don't know the length of the menu you don't know whether it's five items seven or ten or a hundred a hundred items on the menu so it's a length of menu plus one okay but now we're reading through them what we're we going to do here we're going to say values so if you at six for example it's going to have to look for this values is going to be equal to mineral water equals one pound so because it's a for loop so it's going to declare x give it value and then it's going to find i mean give it an id it's going to find the value for that id from the menu here that's what this line means so display uh, display is corresponding value from the menu up here we need to use these variables which we declared here at the start we're going to use them in this function so we need to make them global variables so they are usable anywhere we need to make we make them global so they can use uh, they are usable anywhere these variables okay so after doing that uh, if variable equals y ie user is still ordering okay they haven't they're not finished yet what's going to happen this variable status starts at here starts at y when choice is called when this function is running it's gonna check okay it's status now remember it already has the values for menu and it also ha knows what the menu is and its content so now it's ready to ask a question okay if that's the case it's gonna try this try doing this okay executing this code now this is called um, exception handling, okay? You say try and accept. Try doing this, if it fails, do that. Now try executing this code. Uh, variable, we don't have to name it. num1, okay, is equal to, uh, we're then gonna ask the user to enter portions, okay? Now you've entered the menu number, and this is what's gonna happen, okay? Find the value. Okay, if you entered number four, it's going to look for ID four, and then, actually it was ID three, wasn't it? We selected number three. So it's going to look for number three, which is this here, ID number three. So we are buying peas, and they are eight pound. Now, what it has at this point, it has peas equals eight, because you chose three, okay? And three has peas equals eight. That's what we did here. We chose menu number three, and, okay? three is p is equals eight so what happens we're gonna split this here because remember we are splitting this string remove that part so now we are left with p's and eight like that these are the two items we are left with okay this is at position zero that's at position one in our list because this this these two are going to be in a list okay they're going to be in a list named fields okay we're gonna split this string using this here as our key so every time every time we find this that means we are separating the values in between the values to the left and right okay so this will be eliminated but this will then turn into items as uh, the, uh, part of a string uh, a part of a list and that list is called fields okay we are going to extract some data from our newly created list. Now we have here fields is now equal to, okay, these two values here. Fields is now equal to P's and list, and uh, I mean number eight, okay? Like that, that's how it looks, our list. When that is done, we're gonna say money, okay, is equal to, we're going to extract a certain part of data from our fields okay from this list here and we're gonna assign it to a variable named money okay money is equal to p's okay because no no hang on uh is number eight is equal to eight okay money is equal to eight but at this point money is now considered to be a string okay it's a string it's not yet a number so for us to convert it into a number we use this int okay so money is equal to string but if we just removed that and we just said money equals fields one okay 
that would be just eight as a string. But if we want it to be an integer, the reason why we want it to be an integer is because we are going to multiply times the number of portions you chose. Okay, food is equal to peas. Okay, now you don't need to convert this to anything. We're going to store it for future use. However, we need to now know the price. Okay, calculate the price. Uh, that's equal to portions times where's my x times money okay portions times money now remember portions here we, we wrote the word int that means we are um, validating this so that they are only able to enter integer values this whole thing will repeat itself if you say yes i want to continue with my order Okay, I want to order more stuff or more food. Now, we said with price, we're declaring price as zero. I said at zero. Now, if the price was zero, and the reason why we didn't put it in speech marks is because we want it to be an integer data type. So then it's easy to calculate it, to, you know, do the math functions. Um, count. How many, um, uh, how many portions ordered? Order is our data dictionary, and it's recording our order here is recording every item you order is keeping it to record okay now at this point we say at this point we say um num plus equals and now we say order the num now what, what that, this means is that we're declaring in, in in our order um dictionary we are declaring a, a new key or a new id which is num or number okay and we are giving it this value here which we will be displaying later on okay we'll be displaying that later on now at this point if i say yes press enter and uh, select another number i say three and two press enter yes again press five and then three press enter then no that's what's going to happen okay this what you see here is the number of portions you've ordered for pizza for example or for peas continue ordering okay if you still want to continue ordering it's gonna bring you back here okay now i didn't mention what this meant okay if variable status is y okay because well, sometimes someone might type in an uppercase capital y so if you say if status equals y and they typed a capital y it won't work okay so you need to convert the status to a lower case if they typed anything else, then the try method will catch them and show an error here, which we are, we are about to show, we're about to talk about. After asking this question here, it's going to call this function again, okay? It's until the status, okay, is no longer a Y, that something else happens. So, you know, it runs again to determine the next step. And like I said, what this function does first is to check if you said yes or no for this value, variable status, okay? At the start, it's a yes. When the program is starting, it's a yes, yeah? Status is a yes. But if you change it to a no, then something else is going to happen, okay? Now, if all of this, all of this that should be happening doesn't happen for some reason maybe you entered the wrong value or whatever now it's gonna show an error message okay okay then it's gonna show an error this error message yeah display an error message of incorrect input it's going to say incorrect input and it's going to print this 34 times above and this 34 times below this word. But it's going to have to allow you to read the error message. Okay. So spare, spare or count. Yeah, count. Uh, call back function. Okay, choice. Okay, it's gonna call back function choice, so they allowed second time or another chance 
to choose the right menu from the right uh, choose the right items from the menu without making any more mistakes okay make another mistake again it's gonna show incorrect input and then call back the function but if there are no mistakes made and remember, this is where the else statement comes in. Remember, it asks you anything else. Do you want to carry on with an order? No. If you type anything other than a Y, okay, um, this happens. Yeah. If status is equal to anything other than Y, okay, or a capital Y, okay. They don't want to make another order, all right? Then what's going to happen is clear the display screen. That's why we said import OS, okay, and import time. Okay, it allows the system to set the timer and also allows them to clear the display screen. Okay, then display the title for order details, okay? So it's going to say print under that title your order. Okay. That's a little bit of a decoration. This year, that's what's happening. Okay. This year. All right. Then when you do that, it's now time to read the order. Now remember, order here is our data dictionary that we kept populating, adding items into. Okay. It started off as empty from the start here. Okay. You see over there? It was an empty data dictionary. But now it has the portion and then it has this content inside it. So where are we? We're right there, nearly there. Okay, as long as variable y is um in or as part of now what the for loop does really it actually declares y to be uh the content in order so whereby if order has about 20 items so y is gonna be item one then two then three then four all the way to the end one at a time It's going to display the value of variable y. So it's going to say print this f is going to uh, format everything inside of the quote or the speech marks or quotations. Okay. As long as variable y is part of order. Okay. Order. Okay. As long as variable y is part of order. Okay. Display the value of variable y. It's going to display the first item from order, okay? Because that first item is equal to Y. It's going to display it from order. It's going to display these items one at a time. After doing all that, and it reaches the end of, uh, it reaches the last item in the data dictionary named order, okay? It's now going to separate this order here, okay? Everything here with this line here. Um, now, that is what this function choice does okay so what we have left now is to call function choice okay yes i'm sorry i've been a little bit vague in some places but i hope you kind of understand how this works yeah all right thank you very much don't forget to subscribe and like my video you can share it as well thank you bye bye